little bit. So I guess what's your thoughts on the field that you, that are, that's coming here? Well, obviously, you know, it's uh, first off, it's great to be playing at Bomb, but on the road for 10, 11 days. I think the guys are excited about getting back and playing in front of their crowds and sleeping in their own beds. But uh, I mean, the field's good. It's always good, you know. You know, we don't know a whole lot about Central Connecticut, trying to find out about them as much as we can. And then, then you got Cal and TCU, who, you know, have always been good in baseball. And TCU's been to the World Series. I think they went on a roll a few years back, or they went four or five years in a row. So uh, it's going to be a great regional. Hey, this is the first time that Arkansas has ever hosted three straight regionals. The first time they've ever been a top eight seed in back to back years. What have you thought about this run that the program's been on the last few years? Uh, just that, you know, we played pretty steady baseball. Last year's team was older. We felt like we were in a good team this year's team. You know, kind of had to make their own, you know, their own identity, I guess. They make a name for themselves. You know, they were kind of in the shadow of last year's team. And I think a lot of people thought it was going to be a, a pretty average year for us. And, you know, with six new starters in the field and new conference starters. And really the only thing that's kind of the same is our bullpen. Other than that, it's a different team, and uh, so just uh, it's, it's it's great that we've we've had a good year and won enough games against some really good teams that has allowed us to keep our you know our RPI up there in the rankings and stick around the top of the league, which always is one of the best leagues in the country. Our division, the Western Division, top to bottom, might be the best nationally. So it was it was a battle because we have to play every one of those teams. You know, the Eastern Division has really good teams, but we don't have to play all of them. So. Uh, just proud of the team. Program's in good shape, and hopefully we'll do well this week. With pitching rotation, you tempted to wait and put Campbell in later in the. Yeah, we'll look at that. We're we're trying to get as much information, you know, on Central Connecticut as we can to find out, you know, are they a right-handed hitting team, left switch? Um, just try to find out about their their starting pitching. Um, obviously, we've already peeked at their statistics as far as. Uh, you know, batting average and home runs and that stuff offensively, but we need to dig into it a little bit more, um, and then we'll probably make a decision on that by tomorrow. As far as um, Central Connecticut, they're in the same league as Bryant, and you know, you guys lost to Bryant a few years ago. Is that something you kind of tell the guys about, or what does that say about you know these four seeds can, can rise up and beat big schools too? You know, well four seeds. They're dangerous. I mean, they, they come in, you know, with nothing to lose, probably no pressure on them, happy getting the opportunity to play in a regional. Um, you know, our job as coaches is to make sure our team shows up and takes care of business and plays well. If you lose, you lose because, you know, they just play great. You know, a lot of times these teams will have a, a really good arm, a superstar player. you got to make sure that, uh, you know, you're educated on that as much as you can. And, but we really don't harp on the other team and really talk about the other team as far as all of what they have we're definitely going to point it out to them but it's really more about what we need to do as a team that's kind of been you know our motto all year if we play well if we do what we do well we got a chance to beat anybody and uh, i think we'll, we'll keep that going just the fact that the ualr and northwestern state those games you can almost help them as far as no one yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you can always go back to those if you need to, and say it doesn't matter if from a Power Five conference or a mid major. Um, if you don't play well, you you'll lose, and and you just have to show up and be ready to go. You know, I would think that you know when you get to this time of the year, no midweek game, a couple three practices. You know, I shouldn't have to motivate anybody to be out here on Friday at uh, at one o'clock to play, and I, I'll guarantee you, you won't. You need to make that decision about what time you play when you're the host team. Um, I was asked that question about uh, from our administration. You know, if we had the opportunity to host a regional, would you want to play the first game or the second game? And my answer was the same that it is every year. Just like last year, I'd like to play the first game. And the reason being, um, weather can really put a spin on the whole tournament. You know, if, you, if the first game gets in, the second game gets rain, delay, goes into the night. We have to play the next day, play a couple of games. It can get a little bit rough. And, and then just the fact of sitting around all day. Uh, so the weather's supposed to be beautiful Friday. I, I saw it's supposed to be right around 80 degrees, which would be perfect. Um, should be should be great for the fans. And you feel that even on a weekday, that you won't have any trouble filling this place up? Well, I wouldn't think so. I mean, we've, we've done pretty well 
for 10 years really so it's uh, I think we'll have a good crowd and, and uh, they'll be loud and it, it should be a great atmosphere. There's a, few, a lot of people call in sick. <laughs> there, there, there's a few really good home run hitting teams in this field and the, the postseason last two years the balls really seem to fly out of here. I mean, what do you think about that and maybe why do you think that this is time of year that it, it seems to Well, be? you know, the hitters are usually got it going a little bit. If you get a chance to rest and get them strong again, you know, it it adds up. Sometimes pitchers are a little bit tired, but you never know. You know, they usually give you a good inning. Maybe they not. As, maybe they can't go as long as normal. Uh, you know, this ballpark it has to do a lot of times with the wind, and um, you know, when the wind's out of the straight south, it's tough to hit it out of here, especially to right. But if you get a southwest or a west or northwest wind, uh, even a north, the ball could be really jumpy here. As far as the hitters, kind of looked at what the problem's been the last couple of weeks. I think they're a little tired, to be honest with you. I just uh, I just felt like that our swings were uh, maybe just a little bit slower than normal, a little fatigue, and uh, I think, you know, I'm hoping uh, that we can talk about it in, in a week that, you know, that we're, and we're still playing, that, you know, we just needed to rest a little bit. In case he said he thought guys might be pressing, you know, yeah. do a little too much. Yeah, I mean, it happens. You got guys that, you know, just, they want to win, and uh, sometimes you got to relax a little bit and take a step back and take a deep breath and just say, "Hey, it's it's just baseball. We've been having success all year. Don't push the panic button." And uh, you know, we we're not. We we we're fine. We're just glad that guys are healthy. Now we just need to get them rested, refocused, and get off to a good start this Friday. What's the practice plan for the week? Uh... We'll probably practice midday, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock tomorrow will stretch. Kind of go after that, try to keep practices fairly short, hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, and just got to work on things and tune up a little bit. Yeah, Trevor, he just won the All-SEC second team first base. When he was the All-SEC defensive first base, when he was saying he'd never played that position mm -hmm. before, he's obviously not, you know, big 6'3 first base from like, you know, maybe you'll want to have. So what do you thought about him getting that honor? Well, he's a good defender. You know, he was a second baseman that, that had some shoulder issues with surgery last summer, and it didn't bounce back as quick as we thought it would. And so I really wanted him in the field because I knew he could really field. And bottom line, he didn't have to throw the ball a whole lot from first base. The beginning of the year was all about catching it and fielding it and flipping it to pitchers. And yeah, you have to make a throw or two every now and then on a, on a pickoff or a double play ball. but. He managed to, to get through that, but he he could field, and he's he's got baseball IQ, common sense, and he, you know, we threw him over there, and he just he learned the footwork, and he's just done a tremendous job. And the fact he's not the biggest target, I mean, that doesn't seem to have mattered. No, I mean, you know, the only time that comes into play, obviously, on on high throws, and it'd be nice to have a guy that's six foot four over there, and take it a, a step farther, you'd like to have a left-handed left-handed throw in first baseman, but we haven't had one of those here forever. So uh, it's about making the plays and, 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 and you know, be, just being consistent. And I think he was as good as anybody in the league. And as far as how he's been as a leadoff hitter, you know, getting on a lot of walks, hits. What would you yeah, he's been a tough leadoff hitter. You know, when, when he's going good, he's seeing pitches and fouling off pitches, taking his walks. And uh, he's, been, he's been a really good leadoff man for us second half of this season. You got a couple of TCU transfers in your program. Does, does that help at all whenever you might be preparing for a team like that? Just to, to I don't know. You know, I, I'd say you know, Plunkett he hasn't been there for three years, and you know, Kobe Bolwer is, is is just came in at semester, and he'll be eligible to play next year. And you know, he's not with us right now, so I would say no. I, I don't think it has anything to do with it. We were watching, you know, TV up there, just like you guys were down here, and. You know, they show that montage of, you know, pop-up and Oregon State beating you guys and all that. I mean, how would that make you all feel? Well, I know how it made me feel. You know, it's like, here we go, well, we got to watch this. But, uh, you know, it's part of the it's, it's part of what went on in, in Omaha last year. It's part of the history. And, you know, if, if we'd hit a walk-off homer, they'd be showing that. Or if we'd have made the catch, they'd be showing that. So, you know, it's, uh, it's old news, in my opinion. This is a new year. It does, does it feel your guys' fire a little bit? Do you feel like the, it was motivating to the guys? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. Well, they all, they all said it was. <laughs> then why'd you ask me that question? <laughs> uh, I wanted to get your take. Does it, does it motivate you? You don't need no, it. I but. don't need any motivation. I mean, I, I, I put that to, to bed a long time ago. It's, you know, once this season started, it, it helps get rid of some of the past. And, 
uh, but 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 you learn from the past, and that's how you get better. And I think maybe being in Omaha and not winning last year has has really helped our younger players. Uh, like I said earlier, try to establish their legacy here, and you know what people are going to remember about the 19 team and the 20 team and down the road. So it's been it's you know it's it is what it is. Are you familiar at all with the other coaches in this region field? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I know Coach Lawsonego from TCU pretty well, and and you know Cal. I was real good friends with Dave Esker, the head coach at Cal, but now he's at Stanford, and they have a new coach when they're is doing a great job. But I don't, I don't know, you know, uh, Central Connecticut's coach at all, and uh, but I'll definitely, you know, try to do some research, and, uh, and I respect everybody. I mean, it's coaching at this level, it's a tough job. You know, the last couple of years have been really true regional teams. Teams this year, there's a couple coming in from far away. Any thoughts on that? Maybe why that is? Or it's it's just kind of interesting the way they set them up. I, I mean, I'm not in that room. I don't know how they how they do it. Uh, you know, um, usually we would have maybe somebody from this region. I think um, if Oral Roberts would have been there or Oklahoma State wouldn't have been, you know, finished so strong where they are hosting, you know, we'd have got one of those. Or if we hadn't finished strong, we'd go to theirs. So, uh, yeah, you just you just never know how how they're moving those pieces around in there. I know, I know six SEC teams are hosting regional. I don't know if you guys did you guys get nine or ten teams then. I'm thinking we got ten. Yeah, but just uh, yeah. What do you think? I mean, I'm not a big shot, but what what do you think about six teams hosting regionals and, and getting you know majority of the league in the field? Well, the league's good. I mean, I've made the comment all year. As far as age, the league's older. The, the depth of the league, especially in the Western Division, is incredible. And, you, know, you take maybe, you know, and Alabama was better this year, but, you know, the six teams above them, I think all made, I think they all made regionals. So, uh, is that right? Does anybody yeah. know? So, you know, then there's three from the other side, uh, I guess. Florida, Tennessee, maybe maybe more. Yeah, make it, yeah Bandy. So, I mean, that should tell you right there uh, that the league is just extremely good. It doesn't surprise me a bit that that our teams are hosting, RPIs are high, they've done great out of league, non-conference games. And I mean, you look at Florida that finished two or three or four games under 500 in, in SEC play, they beat everybody in non-conference play. Florida State, you know, three out of four or maybe more, and teams that are in, in, in regionals, and, and they, they, they pretty much got after them. You've had some years where you've been sent to Oklahoma and some years where you've gone to California, Arizona. I wonder, in your experience, what's it like the, the contrast between going far away and, and being so close Yeah, I mean, it's obviously it, it was easier when we went to Stillwater or, or OU because we won those two regionals, come to think of it. Um, when I say easier, it's because you're on a bus. You know, you have to fly, uh, you know, and back then, a lot of times, you're taking, uh, you know, you're running over to the major airport instead of taking a maybe a charter plane. And sometimes they'll let you charter if they can't get you there, but they're trying to save a little bit of money. So the travel can take it out of you. Um, so obviously, I, I think it's a lot easier on us physically and mentally, probably if, if you're staying in the region. Um, but you know, I think once you get to where you're at, it's all about how you feel, get off to a good start, and it's all about baseball. Yeah, it's been so bad, but putting you with potentially Ole Miss and even Georgia beyond that, I mean, it's almost an advantage to teams knowing each other so well. Yeah, you're way ahead of me. I haven't looked that far down the road. I mean, I'm just going to try to get through Friday in this regional. Um, you know, from what I saw pop up, it, it seems like, you know, if, if if the number one or the host wins, you're going to have a lot of leagues matching up against each other in, in super regionals, and I'm sure that that wasn't by chance. How do you feel about being the number five overall seed? So you feel like that was about right? Yeah, I mean, I feel great about it. I mean, especially – when you lose, you know, some games down the stretch, it didn't help us at all. But you know, they kept us there, and I don't know. You know, we have a good RPI, still pretty good. We finished um, high in our division in the West, won the West, uh, shared it with Mississippi State. But then Mississippi State, you know, we, we beat them three times, and they look at all that stuff, and um, you know, just a uh, compliment to our, our our team hanging in there all year and playing well, really from the beginning to the end. Really not going into any major slumps. You know, we lost some weekend series and lost some close to games down the stretch, but uh, you know, really didn't get blown out and uh, you know, very consistent. Is anyone saying he thought Matt Hobbs was about the best hire you could have made to replace Wes? Now that you've gone through a full season, how do you feel about that? Well, I think 
Matt's done a great job here. You know, you, you put yourself in his shoes coming into a program that finished second in the country last year. Um, the fan base, expectation, the league, um, following a pitching coach that goes to the big leagues. I mean, it probably couldn't have been a whole lot more pressure than that. And I think he's handled it really well, just came in and worked, kept his head down, got to know the players, tried to learn the players, learn their personalities. Uh, obviously, had to try to learn about their skills on the field and what they were good at and what they weren't good at. Um, I mean, there's a lot there, and, and I think he's done a great job and, and uh, I look forward to you know coaching with him down the road going forward. Well, what do you think is the best thing he's brought to the table for you guys? Um, just, just the fact that he had a, uh, a calm demeanor about himself and the way he handled it when he got here. He didn't come in and just try to change everybody, and, and he let them pitch and show them what he could do, um, and, and just you know didn't didn't disrupt maybe the, each pitcher individually. He just tried to help them, and uh, you know I knew he was a good pitching coach, or I wouldn't have gone after him. Everybody that I talked with said he was a good pitching coach. He was just you know you don't know what you're getting you know as far as personality a lot of times or how he's going to treat the players which i think he's done a great job treating them with respect and giving them their giving them their space at the same time you guys have been so good at home well usually every year but the last two years especially how good do you feel i mean how good is it to be home especially when you've been on the road for a while well i think that's one thing that, that has really maybe taken it to another level the last few years you know the, the sec is sent us on the road that last series because of when our finals fall and being away for 10 or 11 straight nights and then getting a chance to come back not having to pack up and fly out or take a bus and go play somewhere else in a regional has uh has been good for us and i'm hoping that you know we'll play well this weekend you know, a lot of teams their high season lose their regionals at home oh well, traditionally arkansas is actually three and four which might surprise people, but, but you guys obviously won last year. I mean, how, how big an advantage is it, and do people maybe make a mistake assuming if you're at home you're going to win? I don't think it's a huge advantage. It's an advantage because of, uh, you know, the, the travel uh, and not having to travel. And maybe maybe for maybe some of the first game it's an advantage. So you really get to know the, the facilities and, and – everything you do get a practice the day before which you learn a little bit about it um, but it's more just about being comfortable when you get on the field uh, you know you, it, there's not a major advantage and if you look at some of the games over the years they're extremely close one run games two run games and anything can happen and everybody's good at this time of year and it's really about you know who, who's hot who's pitching well who's hitting well and sometimes it's just about matchups you know you don't match up well against that team you got too many left-handed hitters and they got left-handed pitchers. You got too many right-handed hitters and they got great righties with good sliders. And, uh, you know, so a lot of times it just comes down to matchups. Yeah. I had a couple more things to ask about. I think everybody's, you know, everybody's